okay when we say hadoop is up and running we'll try to check how many demands are running whether all the services are running or not how we will check we'll use the command jps jps is a java processor java pro processing services like how many services are running which is you know these are the java processors right the hadoop framework has been designed and developed by using java so these are ideally the java services so these are the demons right so these demons we will check by using the uh, command jps so when you check jps it will show you the all the demands it has to show the five demands for the normal setup when it comes to the hbase and if if you are in, if you have any other tools like a quorum or journal uh, new tools are there when you are working with them those also will come under this java services that time you will be seeing more than five services now for time being we will concentrate on the first five the basic or main five services without these services we may not able to process the data we can store the data with the name node if you have a name node data node and secondary node we can store the data if you want to process the data you should have a job tracker and task tracker as well okay we will see one by one okay fine what is name node what is name node see in the architecture as i explained in the yesterday name node is the master node right he as i explained he is like a team lead he is like a team lead in the team who will manage the team members and what are their his roles and responsibilities what he will do when it comes to the hadoop what is in a, what when it comes to the hadoop in hdfs what is the name node role and what is it what is the main purpose of the name node here in the hdfs cluster name node is a master node where it will manage the cluster managing the sense it will be it will be interacting to the data nodes and it will be checking the data node statuses and it will be scheduling the jobs and it it will be assigning the work and it will be maintaining the latest state of all the data nodes it will maintain the file structure in the tree form right yeah. is it clear guys about the name node okay i'm repeating one more time name node is a master node in the hdfs architecture and it will maintains the file system on naming space in the tree format it will not store any data persistently data in the sense what are the data we are going to process it will store the data like what uh, data like a uh, uh, edit logs in fs image format that are the metadata and the name node will maintain the status states of the cluster or states of the data node in the form of edit log edit log and fs image and those uh, name node will maintain latest state in the ram as well as persistent storage it means your local H, uh, hard disk in the name node hard disk okay and the name node will be keep talking to the data nodes i mean keep receiving the status from the data nodes and your name node will be assigning the task to data nodes when it comes to job tracker and task tracker okay here that uh, it will maintain the files files i mean it will maintain the file status in a tree structure format means it will be like uh, we'll be seeing right let's say i'm just i'm just giving an example here root slash sample.txt same we can sometimes we may see root slash like this right it means that one root will be there under multiple subdirectories will be there that that is called a structure a tree structure
okay in the in the ram in the uh, name node ram it will it will be storing later state like a fs image because it it should be it, it should be uh, suppose if anyone contacts it, it has to give the which are the data nodes has what data which are the data nodes are running where and all the space is available all the information should ready with the name node those details will be there in uh, ram as well as in the local file system those those files are like your edit logs and fs image what is edit log and what is fs image we'll be seeing in the next slide is it clear guys about name node okay could you, could you please anyone you know um repeat what is the name node this is very much important we should know what is the name node and we should know what is the roles and responsibility of the name node if you, you should be very care you should be very clear about the architecture okay i'll be repeating it for you guys one more time name node is a master and it manages the file it manages the namespace it maintains the file system in that and metadata it's ideally it's a metadata in the in the form of directories in the tree tree structure as i shown you the tree structure okay now this information that name space or it will manages the how many data nodes are there where and all the file to block or block to block to data node this info this mapping will be stored in the name node it will it will be stored in the ram ram in the sense for to, to process for the live interactions and it will be storing the same thing into the local local hard disk if i don't have the latest state in the ram how it will give the responses when client interact with them right so it will it will be keeping the latest state in the ram as well as it will be keeping into the local file system that is the reason we need a name node which should have a, a high end or hardware that is the reason if you uh, in a cluster for the name node our configurations will be more i mean it, it will be like a high end configuration it's not a commodity hardware name node should be a should not a commodity hardware because it is a single point failure single point of failure right if we lose the name node contact and we will be we cannot interact with the cluster so that is the reason we should have a good hardware for the name node okay your name node knows knows everything about the data nodes like what is the current task is running on the data node and it knows what are the blocks or what are the data has been stored in the name node and it will be maintaining all these details in the metadata in the name nodes memory as well as persistent data i mean per persistence in the local file system okay is it clear guys we have 5500017 right i think uh, uh, it's uh, sorry i didn't remember the the port number exactly yes 5550070 okay and what is a data node data node is a slave node in the cluster who will store the data in it and who will actually process the data it will be keep interacting with the name node saying that i have this data i have these lots of free i am uh, i am this much healthy all this information will keep sending to the name node in the form of rpc calls for every 3 seconds okay if didn't send uh, a heartbeat to the name node within a 10 seconds it will treat it as a the name node will treat it as a the dead node and it will mark it as a dead node when it comes when it i mean when it is uh, again start sending that heartbeat then it will treat it as a live node and it will remove the there will it the your name node will be maintaining one table like uh, live node dead node 
so when the data node is not sending the heartbeat to the name node it will mark it as a dead node in the uh, dead node table it's, it's, it's ideally it's a table for for your understanding i'm telling it's a table it will be maintaining some metadata there it will mark it as a dead node okay is it clear guys and what is the secondary name node the name it is saying that secondary name node when we when we hear when we when we see this name we'll think that you know uh, secondary name node is a uh, like uh, when the primary name node fail the secondary name node will take automatically the control no it is not the case the secondary name node is for only the backup purpose not only it's an ideal it's not only the backup purpose it is not a backup node i can say what it will do it will just merge your transactions your edit log with the fs image and again it send it back to the your name node we will see in detail about the secondary name node what and all it will do and when it will when it will execute all the details we'll see in a coming slide okay let's see what is a job tracker okay job tracker is a service which is running with run on the hadoop and which is running on the uh, master node or job tracker you can also say is a master daemon and name node secondary name node data nodes are the machines i can say physical machines and when it comes to the job tracker task tracker those are the demons those are the demon services where will run on the jvm it's like a java virtual machine it's, it's kind of you no know, thread it's, it's not ideal it's not a thread it is a one service which is running on the back end and when it comes to the name node data node secondary node these are the, those are the physical machines okay so why we need a job tracker and task tracker when we want to process a data through anything like mapreduce or any tool if you use any tool like your mapreduce or hive pig ideally at back end it will start it will assigning the task to it will be assigning the task right task to um, it will assign the task to the data nodes so we when we are processing the data when when we are storing the data we don't need the job tracker and task tracker when we are processing the data we should need we should have a job tracker and task tracker okay that is the reason i have asked one question all sometime before without running the job tracker and task tracker we can store the data in cluster while for storing the data we don't need the job tracker and task tracker but if you want to access the data or if you want to process the data we should need we have to i mean the job tracker and task tracker has to run if these two are not running we cannot process any data okay and what is the job tracker one what is roles okay as i said job tracker is the master service which is running on the hadoop and which will which will uh, maintain the uh, manage the cluster which will which will knows the resources and which are the resources are free and which will assign the task which will assign the task to the uh, uh, i mean a slave uh, demos like a task tracker okay and it will keep monitoring it and your job tracker is responsible for the scheduling the job okay so let's see the flow how it will when job tracker will start how how the task will be assigned when your application your client application submits the job like uh, when i said hadoop jar and jar name and you have given the you have submitted the job to the cluster then your your job tracker then job client will be there and it will be and it will be interacting with the job tracker and it will take the job id and it will that with the job id the whole, whole the resources will be kept into the hdfs and it, it, your job tracker your job tracker will ask, uh, check the schedule i mean assign the scheduler for the uh, execute the job and it will talk to the name node and after talking to the name node it will take the latest i mean resources what are the data nodes and what are the you know data nodes are free i mean what are the data nodes are 
I have this data and what where are the data nodes are slots are free okay then it will assign the task to them and it will launch the new JVM here guys if anyone asks that what uh, whether your work uh, the job is launched on thread if anyone says that the job is uh, job is launched by a thread no it is not a thread it's a completely JVM each task each task tracker will run on the JVM not in the thread please remember that your each task each task tracker will run on the JVM it is not launched via threads thread is completely different and processor is completely different okay your JVM is completely different JVM is a it is a Java virtual machine it will not launch the threads it is it launch a complete JVM because th your data nodes will your data node will be on JVM right your data node will contain the JVM Java virtual machine there it will run the task trackers okay once the once the job job ID has been created, once it has been scheduled, and it will identify, it will talk to the name node, it will get the resources where and all the data is lo located, and then it will start launching the jobs on them. Okay, and also it will smartly identify that which uh, see we have the replication factor, and it will check which one is near, which one which one is near uh, data node, or which where the data is very nearly there it will start launching if it's not able to launch and it may go to next rack so that will come into the uh, we'll see what is the rack awareness later point of time so at, it will try to launch the jobs in the same rack if it's if something happened or data is not available in the same rack it will launch the job into the other rack it's called data locality And after assigning the task, those tasks will be monitored by your job tracker. And it will be keep checking what is the status and how much it has finished. If anyone is not able to finish, and your job tracker will launch the same job in other replication. Okay, and it will keep receiving the notifications from your task tracker. It is a master service. Okay, when work completes, it will your job tracker will interact with the client and it will inform that this job is completed. Clear about the job tracker? Very good question, Chandu. One job it's not like a, one job tracker contains how many task trackers. It's not like that. It's your uh, when you submit the job okay when you submit the job how many mappers are required how many reducers required will be calculated based on your input okay and the reducer tasks we can specify but mapper tasks will be decided by the your client or your splits suppose if you have a five splits there will be five map tasks will be running you can assign any number of reducers for that Depends on those map tasks, your number of task trackers will be calculated, number of task trackers will be launched. Okay, ideally these task tracks are running on your data nodes. It depends. The task trackers, how many task trackers are running? Uh, ideally, it is like you know, um, it may be the how many how many data blocks you have, how many blocks you have, those many machines it has to launch, right? Okay, if any task is taking more time, or if any task is taking more time, it will it will keep intimating to the job tracker. Is it your doubt is clear, Chandu? Correct. Each name node will be having only one job tracker. How many data nodes are there? How much data has been spreaded? Let's say ten in ten data nodes, uh, I have a ten blocks in that. I have a ten blocks in ten machines. It has to launch the ten job trackers. Sorry, uh, task trackers. In two job only, I have a even though if I have ten data nodes and my my uh, data has been spreaded across only three 
three machines it will be launched with three three job trackers internally again the map task and reduce task will be running but wherever the data is there there only your, your job trackers will be launched is it clear chandu okay what is a task tracker task tracker is a slave daemon or slave service which will run on the data node and it will it will it will actually it will process the data it will launch the map tasks or reduce tasks if a task tracks actually launch the map task and reduce tasks and the task tracker will uh, will execute i mean it will process the actual data and it is keep responding to the name node sorry your job tracker it will keep sending the status to the keep uh, your job tracker okay your task tracker is responsible to your task tracker is responsible to take the data process it okay so there is no much roles uh, no roles are responsible for the task tracker apart from the processing the data and taking the data something you know some, there's some um, in one machine the split has been up, the two blocks are there the two blocks are uh, spread it into two data nodes and the split has been calculated into one task so both two blocks has been treated as a one task two data blocks has been treated as a one task or one split then it has to launch a map job on one split so what it has to it has to copy the data from other data node so that also will be that that's also one of the responsibility of your task tracker your task tracker only will take care of it it will start copy the data from other data node mapper reducer is created by job tracker or task tracker it will be created by your task tracker your job tracker only launch the task trackers map map job and reduce job will be launching on the data nodes so who will launch it your task tracker is it clear magna okay is it clear about your all the demons shall we go move to next slide here here the detailed information for each each no demon <laughs> what is the data node it is a slave node data data node can read and write the data into h i mean ideally it is in hdfs data node when we say data node it is there in hdfs okay i mean it hdf what is a hdfs hdf is a virtual file system which will layer on top of the local file system okay so your hdfs contain one or more data nodes and it will be, the data has been replicated across the across the cluster so guys you may get an entry question why we need a replication i have given example yesterday so replication is more important for the speculative execution for the data i mean fault tolerance i can say okay the data nodes are uh, meant for storing the data and the how it will store the data in the form of blocks so what is a block block is a physical chunk of data clear guys and where this mapping will be there file to block and block no uh, block to data node this mapping will be stored into your name node your name node will be maintaining the this mapping file to block and block to data node will be maintained by your name node in the form of edit logs and fs image what is a name node as i explained name node is a master node and it will be keep interacting it will maintain the it will it will maintain the metadata of uh, you know your cluster i can say and it will be maintaining the uh, file uh, file uh, block to file and sorry file to block and your block to data node mapping will be maintaining in your name node 
and this fs image latest state will be there in the primary memory which is ram and the same uh, the same data will be available in the local file system as well and what is edit logs and what is the fs image I, I, i'll cover in the next slide edit logs are the raw transactions if i do if i if i try to access some data if i write the some data all these transactions will be going to the edit logs and later it will be merged with the fs image i'll tell you when it will merge and who will merge okay as i said so all the information will be stored in the main, main memory as well as it will be stored in the hard disk for the per, uh, persistent storage like it for the future reference okay for persistent storage as i said name node is the central point of you know our failure single point of failure i can say in the architecture so if it fails we cannot interact with the cluster okay if anyone wants to interact with the cluster first they have to talk to name node only there is no alternative option they has to talk to name node they have to get the resources from the name node like if he wants to write or he want to read he has to talk to the name node only even though if you want to process some data he has to talk to the job tracker job tracker will be is a demon which is running on the name node okay these roles and responsibilities are you know bit important guys you may get you know across the inter question we may you may come across the one of the question from here what is that job tracker ta- roles and responsibilities or what is the name node uh, you know roles and responsibilities okay what is the limitations of name node so let's assume i have a cluster big cluster i have there are so many people are working on it the people are keep interacting with the cluster by sending the uh, no putting in the data retrieving the data so for each transaction it will be entered as i said each transaction it means each uh, each transaction when you put the data or when you receive the data each transaction uh, will be written into the edit logs like make entry it will make entry into the edit logs let's assume i have a i have done so many interactions let's assume i have done millions of billions of interact uh, transactions our cluster keep running it will not be you know down for some time or it will not stop it for will not stop it for maintenance for some time right it's a, it's a live cluster to keep running so when i do a more transactions each transaction will make entry into the edit logs then you will edit edit logs become a huge your edit log become you huge then if you edit log is become a huge large i can it is it's manage it's a bit difficult to manage it right when it is restarted your cluster something happened or we have a, you know taken some shutdown time and we have restarted the cluster when you restart the cluster it has to merge with the fs image it has to load if fs image into your fs image into the memory so to merge this it will take more time to merge your edit log with the fs image the fs image will be there in the ram not the edit logs edit logs will be only raw transactions will be there in our our local file system okay when your name node restarts it has to merge your fs image and edit log it will take huge amount of time because the edit log has the full, you know huge amount of transactions in that to overcome this limit our limitation for limitation of the name node we come up with a secondary name node what is the secondary name node second secondary name node is a machine where periodically interact with the name node and it will take the fs image and edit logs and it will merge it and will return back to the name node okay if anyone wants to go through you can go through the slide okay uh it interacts to name node for every 40 minutes it is not like 40 minutes uh, chendu we can configure it by default is one hour or if if you reaches the transactions 1 million transactions that's also configuration by default if you reaches the 1 million transactions it will co- it will talk to the name node i mean name node will directly send to the uh, 
the transactions and fs directly sent to the uh, secondary name node and your secondary name node will will merge the fs image and edit log there are two configurations one is the every one hour other one is if you reaches the transaction 1 million 1 million transactions if you reaches the 1 million transaction we have to I mean, the secondary name node will take the FS image and edit log, it will merge it and it will update to the name node. Okay, why can't we recover metadata and start running normal from secondary name node when name node fails? Okay, your name node will not, will not store any uh, uh, your uh, edit logs on FS image. See, actually, if you don't have the secondary name node, what will happen? The name node is failed. Okay, and our people will come, they will take some recovery tool, they have some recovery tools, they will try to recover the data from, I mean, this FS image and edit, edit logs from your uh, uh, primary name node only, and they will try to, uh, again, merge them, that they will try to bring about the new machine, or they will copy this data into other machine, they will try to bring it up. It may take so much of time, it may take one hour, two hours, three hours, right, to overcome that problem, like, to to make a faster interaction to make a you uh, know recovery faster we have a secondary name node what secondary name node will do if periodically it interact with the name node and it will take the edit log and fs image and it will merge it there will be copy in secondary name node as well but the secondary name node will never take care of the roles and responsibility of the primary name node when the primary name node is fail and we will interact with the secondary name node we will take that state till what state it has been you know updated and merged we will uh, we will uh, we will bring back to the our name node with the help of the secondary name node. That's it. That's the that is the only purpose we are using the secondary name node. Uh, secondary. One second, one second, guys. One by one, I think uh, Megan has one node. Secondary name node also stores edit logs on name node RAM, and it's only right. See, secondary name node will not store any information in their primary memory, it will store into the its local file system only. It will, it will take if a secondary name node will interact with the name node and it will take the FS image and edit log and it will merge it and it will give back to the name node. See guys, here when it comes to the secondary name node, there are multiple, multi, multiple, uh, there are mul there are multiple options for it. Like when it, there is a backup node, there is a checkpoint node. All these are the secondary name nodes only, and there is a high availability. Okay, there is a federation. All these things come for the alternative for the secondary name node. Okay, we will see them one by one. Actually, th this backup node, checkpoint node, are coming to Hadoop two onwards. To overcome this problem, ideally we have a problem where the name node is a single point of failure, right? Or if it is fails, we may not be able to interact with the cluster. If to bring it up, it will take some time. Minimum one hour or two hours it will take because we have to get the data from you no know, uh, name nodes, local memory, and you no know, uh, then load into the primary memory. I mean, then load into the new machine. Then we have to bring it up. To avoid that. We have a secondary name node. Where we'll get the, uh, where we'll take this. See, let's say in the name node, you have stored some data. This is completely corrupted. We were not able to take the backup from the name node and fail the name node. So from the, from where we'll get the, uh, this backup, we will get this backup from the secondary name node. The secondary name node will not contain the latest, the secondary name node will not contain the latest, uh, transactions, latest FS image, right? It will be containing the old one. Let's assume last one hour, I, last one hour, I have done some transactions later. I didn't do any transactions or I have done some transaction with interaction uh, cluster. Then my name node is failed. 
will you have will you be having the latest image in uh, latest image or latest state in the secondary name node no we will not be having the latest image in or latest inform uh, uh, latest state in the secondary name node right so secondary name node will contain only the till what point so till before you know one hour before or one million records one million transactions before only right so then only it will come up okay one second uh, chandu has one doubt here one doubt we configure 40 minutes after 10 minutes the after 10 minutes name node fails the transactions happened in 10 minutes that will not be back up to the secondary node no that will not be back up to the secondary name node there you have a uh, some architecture changes changes in hdfs uh, hadoop 2 i can say where the direct these transaction will be stored into the H, uh, primary name node in local memory as well those transactions will be there in your primary memory i mean primary name node like your name node local file uh, local storage we can when st when it starts it will take that those transactions it will merge with the fs image then it will up, up the uh, it will start it will up, uh, no it will start getting the latest uh, status and it will it will uh, no it will start i mean uh, alive it will start functioning see the one the name node the secondary name node purpose is here you just merge the prime um, edit clocks and fs image that is the only purpose here if your name node completely dead there is no we cannot able to get any recovery then what we will do we will talk to the secondary name node we will get those information that is not the latest state in the secondary name node you will not have the latest state you will be having some some point of time like last one hour or let's say two uh, one million records when it reaches one million records that state only will be there after that what the transaction happen it, it will not be have it will not be available in the secondary name node we will be losing those information let's assume your your second your primary name node is not failed but just restarted it has some problem we have for maintenance we just restarted it is not failed your name node is perfectly fine but only for some purpose we restarted it then what will happen it will contain the all latest state and it will be having the latest transactions everything will be there in the name node memory when it start the name node what it will try to do it will try to merge your edit logs with the fs image to to merge it it may have it may take some time to merge it and it will also wait 80 percent of the data nodes or 80 percent of the data nodes has to report their their blocks to the name node they will start reporting to the name node right then once the 80 percent of the data nodes has reported them saying that we have this these blocks we have these these blocks then your name node will come into functioning i mean come to live and it will start functioning till the state it is merging and is waiting for the re reporting 80 percent of the uh, cluster it will be in safe mode this is also one of the interview question why your name node will be in safe mode we'll see in detail clear about the secondary name node primary name node and fs image and edit logs we will see in detail i'll show you that you know what are the data will be there available in the fs image and edit logs are you guys clear about name node secondary name node and how the transactions happen other guys Okay, I think someone has money, Anusha. Anusha, money. I mean, is it clear, guys? Or you want me to repeat or?
okay i think it's clear i think these guys are not responding i don't know uh, maybe some problem fine we'll go with the next slide okay job tracker uh, we have already explained what is a job tracker if anyone wants to go through it please have a look i'll just take some water <clears throat> okay let me explain point by point here job tracker is mainly used for resource management not only resource management for the job scheduling for monitoring as well job scheduling is nothing but assigning the tasks and it's I mean, it's a, uh, I can say when it comes to the processing, it is a main component, like it's a master component when it's a data processing. It takes the user request to submit the data to, I mean, the task to the slave nodes, like URL task trackers. Your, your track, your job tracker will keep talking to the name node and get the resources and assign the, assign the task to those resources. I mean, those data nodes are those task trackers which are running those data nodes. Okay, your, your task tracker will keep intimating or keep interacting with the job tracker. Keep telling that, that this is the this is the job I have processing. This is the status, and these are the blocks are there with me. This all, this all information will be keep sending to the name node as well as the job tracker in the form of heartbeats. And let's assume any any uh, task tracker is failed or any task tracker or any uh, data node is taking more time to process the data then your job tracker will launch the same job into other machines which are available in the same track uh, same rack first we'll check in the same rack if it is not available in the same rack it will it will launch this uh, the same job into other rack as well clear guys Okay, what's, what are the task trackers? What is the roles and responsibility of the task tracker? Task trackers roles and responsibilities are, it is a slave node. I mean, it, is, it can say it is a slave process which is running on the data node. Each, each ta uh, task tracker responsibility is to execute the individual task into their data nodes where the data is available. Your job tracker will be assigning the work. Guy, you do this work, you do this work, you do this work like that. The, your job tracker will assign the work to them and your task tracker will launch the map, map job and reduce job. If any any problem with the uh, map job or reduce job, any problem with that, it, your task tracker will keep intimating to your job tracker, saying that this guy, I mean, saying that this is the status of running of this this job. This is the status of running of this job. Like that, your task tracker will keep in, intimating to the job tracker. Okay, if job tracker is not receiving the heartbeat from the task tracker, and it will be, I mean, some specified amount of time. That also can be configured. So it assumes that that job that that data node or that task is uh, crashed and it will resubmit the job into some other machines where it is possible. That is that is the job of your job tracker. But your your task tracker is responsible to intimate them, give the status to the job tracker. Is it clear? I think someone asked me the question: uh, Who will launch the map map job and uh, map task and reduce task? You can see this diagram where it will make you clear. See the diagram and who, who is making who is assigning the job track and task track i mean map task and reduce task your task tracker your task track will run on the jvm is it clear guys is it clear and okay uh, before going into this data flow I want to uh, every government setup is should be ready then we will do some exercise we will do one exercise putting data retrieving the data then we will go to the read flow and write flow okay now I will spend another half an hour time to uh, see every each and every one's each and every one setup once each setup is ready we will go with the uh, practical thing read flow write flow how we will write how we will read and all those things we'll see okay guys I'm stopping my screen share and I want you to any one of you 
any one of you please share your screen uh, then i'll see the what uh, i'll see the status like i'll, I'll see uh, whether your machines are running or not according to that accordingly we will uh, do the setup uh, let me stop recording as well